because we've got a Friday shootout, 10,000 points on the line, jackpots in play, and they're off and racing. You see Bella Williams, no rest for her. She has shot the gun and she is out of there, as is Tiani Massey. Now, Tiani Massey is a dogged athlete. She goes out there with all of her heart. She punches a punch and look at her go. She is going out there to blow this build away in the swim and get herself as much breathing room to then be able to make decisions on where she goes and what she does there. So I love this tactic of going out hard. It was one that, not that I was much of a racer, but it was one that I used to love. Go out, put it all out there, and hope for the best when it comes on the way in fully. Well, we said that before, Duff. The advantage of the surf race is when you're out in front and you're in your own water, it is far more efficient and easier to swim through the water and get through with speed. When you get caught up in that pack, you spend the entire time wrestling, rolling, fighting, cl clashing arms, and running into the other competitors. All that does is it's inefficient and it slows you down. So that's exactly why Tiani Massey took out of the gates there. She wants to get out in front. And if you see there, she's got her own water. She's in her own water and she will just continue to stretch that lead out. But I can see one of the girls from Northcliffe is pulling up on her hip. She doesn't want to let it go. It's hard to tell from here, but I would go as far as to say it's more than likely going to be Georgia Miller, maybe a Harriet Brown. But look, those two girls are shoulder to shoulder. As you look back through the field, then you've got the rest of the field in all that aerated water swimming through. It's hard to get a good catch or have a good kick in that aerated water. And you can see the girls just a little bit off course there as they start to make their way back to that orange boy. Now, swimming all on your own in that green water compared to swimming in the pack poorly, how much of a benefit is it? It's huge. As we sort of talked about before, when you're out in your own clean water, you actually relax more, you drop your head down, you're more efficient through your catch, and you just get into this really, really nice rhythm. As we can see now, the girl from North Cape, I'm going to say... Naomi that, Scott, I think. Naomi I think it's Scott. Naomi Scott out in front with Tiani Massey just on his feet. And then you do have George Miller and Courtney Hancock in third and fourth. Now, Naomi Scott, she is in a, a great reign of... Um, vein of form because she is just going out there attacking races as we go. Now we had the order wrong at the top of the, uh, the thing because we've been used to the qualifiers for the Shannon tomorrow. So it's not the board swim ski. I believe it's a swim board ski. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go from the swim into the two craft which means that Danielle McKenzie has her two strongest and her best to finish it off. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this unfolds. I thought they were going around the one can. They're going around the both. So I'm going to say traditional course, all cans are in play. Obviously just that traditional sprint finish through under the arch to uh, to take out the summer surf title for the Friday shootout. As we see the girls start to make their way in, they start to fan out poorly. Is this where tactics come into play? Do you talk to your coach before you race or is it just go out there, feel the ocean and see where the motion of the ocean takes you? Definitely not. You're always analysing the surf conditions on the wave or you're looking at the wa where the waves are breaking, the sandbanks, the rips, the sweep. As we see Naomi Scott does so well to pick that up. She led that swim race. She did so well and she Look hasn't at the got, she's not going to take it all the way to the beach, but she picked it up enough to stretch out the lead as we watch. I'm going to say Brielle Cooper or Lily Sullivan. I think Sullivan. that might have been Lily O'Sullivan that pulled down that one. We, we, we're we not quite sure. We don't get the full picture right here. Now, it's going to be someone that emerges out of this whitewash as our true leader, but it was Lily O'Sullivan that came screaming down that one there. And as we see here as well, about to pop up is one of the locals from DMD North. I reckon that might be Hannah, Hannah Scully. No, it's Harriet, Harriet Brown. Brown. Now, she has had so much mis misfortune on her home beach of BMD Northcliffe that it's hard to know. But look at that. Naomi Scott there found herself away, found herself a bobble, but then got herself back in the race, got herself back in the lead. Tiani Massey after that impressive start is there. Courtney Hancock is not out of this. As we see Jade Sleeve, former under-19 junior Ironwoman champion, Danielle McKenzie, McKenzie in a formidable position. Paulie, if I'm the girls right now, you said you had nightmares of the orange and green. If I'm the girls, I've got nightmares of Danielle McKenzie on a ski. Danielle McKenzie has set up an incredible opening swim leg by her standards. With the board ski to come, she is in a oh, she's in a very, very dangerous position. And the girls know that. If they look over and they see Danielle McKenzie with the board and ski to go, they are nervous. But you can't rule out Harriet Brown either. She's she's very, very handy on, on her board as well. Yeah, I just wanted to draw a little bit of attention to Harriet Brown. She came out of that swim out in the top lead. She was there next to Naomi Scott. And as she entered the water, she was back to about third or fourth. Now, she's carrying a bit of a leg injury. So she's not going to be able to work that transition as hard as what the other girls are. And that transition is absolutely enormous. As you see, Hannah Scully, Scully she is board. a 
the current um, board series champion from last year. So she is used to these conditions. She's on her home beach. Danielle McKenzie on the stealth black down the bottom as well. Tiani Massey needs to roll. She does. Oh, she's got absolutely smashed by that one there. She comes out. Look at Harriet Brown. She gets the perfect ramp up. So Harriet Brown has picked this ocean apart like Moses parting the Red Sea. And she is on out here as we see the bottom of the screen as well. Some of them start to fly on out. It's that North Cliff as well as that of Newport. Could be Gemma Smith. Watch out for Gemma Smith with her fastest leg to come. That ski leg to finish. Bella Williams. Oh, sorry, Naomi Scott there on the pink ski. Harriet Brown, though. She found a nice one. Lizzie Wellborn. She is the one to watch in this board. She's on that bright yellow right in the middle of the screen with the orange Newport cap. But there it is. The black ski. Danielle McKenzie. We are on Danielle McKenzie watch right now. She's currently in about fifth or sixth position as we see out in front. Is it the, uh, the young girl from Newport there with her? Or is it one of the Alex girls? It looks like it might be one of the Alex girls. Could, could be Emma be, Woods. Could I'm be gonna... Woodsy there from Alex or possibly even Taylor Halliday. Um, but whoever it is, it's that yellow and black. And look, these athletes don't make it easy on anyone watching at home because they're all in. The, they're all training partners. They're all friends out here. They go out there and they race as hard as anyone possibly can. But to me, it does look like it is Woodsy there out in front. Emma Woods of Alex Headland. And look, she's uh, she's starting to stroke away from these girls, Pulley. Yeah, she's not wrong. That's uh, It could be Emma Woods out there from the Alexandra Headlands. So I'm going to say it's Grace Otto on the green board that's just below there in the Burley Heads Mowbray Park cap. And then with from the Northcliffe cover, it could be Bella Williams. I'm not. That might be our girl, Bella Williams, that just did the national anthem. She was number 20 on the line. So re when they reversed the order, she could have been back up on that northern end. As we see on the top of the screen there, the yellow is Harriet Brown. The blue is Danielle McKenzie. The girls are all starting to really pull up relatively level. The one that's going to move and shake through this board deck, without a doubt, is Lizzie Wellborn from Newport. As we see her on the top of screen there on that yellow, look at her rating, Duff. She is always three strokes to every other girl's one. Yeah, look at Danielle McKenzie now start to make her way through this field on that black stealth board. And uh, as you can see as well, Harriet Brown. Now, one one that just came into vision before that we haven't mentioned yet, but we should be mentioning. It's just coming into screen now. It's Georgia Miller. She's the three-time consecutive Australian champion. As well as that, it's the up-and-comer. She's just had a, a good amount of results in the most recent events. It's Lucy Derbyshire. And she tucks onto the back of this pack right now. Tiani Massey, she's right there tucked onto Harriet Brown. Now, Harriet Brown is the current world board champion. So... This is a class field right now. And when you break them down into individual events or individual aspects of the iron, everyone has their moment, don't they? And what's really blowing my mind up is just how close this racing is. All the other races we've seen have been really stretched out because of the surf conditions, yet we're two legs into three of the open iron woman final. And the, the top 10 or 12, 15, maybe even 20, they're not that far apart. They're all still in this with a chance of winning, especially with that final ski leg to come. Wave on here for Harriet Brown. She gets a chance. Danielle McKenzie gets a chance as well, as does Tiani Massey. So Tiani Massey drops down that one. Danielle McKenzie bounces on as well as Harriet Brown is nice and clean out in front. As you see, oh, Tiani Massey, she almost comes unstuck there and she pulls that one back like she's wrangling a big bull out there in the uh, in the cattle yard. But you see the girls, they take that little rest on the belly pulley. They don't get up under the knees. They start to put the rate through because they've got to get through this little inshore trough and look at that out the back that's Jasmine Raywood a 17 year old on that green ski out the back for the Burley Heads Club and Jade Slee a former junior champion Tiani Massey she falls out of the picture now Danielle McKenzie I tell you what you like the look of her here don't you Paulie well we talked about it before if you're Harriet Brown and you're looking across with the ski leg to go and that's Danielle McKenzie beside you you're gonna be pretty nervous there's a lot of other girls in that field you'd rather be going into a final ski leg against and I can assure you it's not Danny McKenzie she is incredible but if there's one thing we know Harriet Brown is a fighter and she knows how to win we just talked about she's coming back from a calf injury duff she can she can almost taste the victory she's forgotten about that calf injury what I think Danny, um, uh, sorry, what I think Harriet Brown is thinking right now is not about Danny McKenzie and her ski leg. It's her own ski leg. She knows that she's in control of her decisions and what she's able to do. Now, she probably understands she might not be able to beat Danielle McKenzie on raw power. So what does Harriet Brown do in this situation, knowing that she probably can't match Danielle McKenzie pound for pound in the ski department? So how does she do something here to put the advantage back into her, her court? You've got to put the blinkers on, Duff. In, in conditions like this, doesn't matter how good you are, whether you're Danielle McKenzie on a, on a ski or Alani Pallister in a swim leg, 
in these surf, surf conditions, we talk about Mother Nature can always have the last laugh. Harriet's got to, exactly as you said, you hit the nail on the head, Harriet's got to forget about that Daniel McKenzie beside her, and she needs to read the surf. She needs to be focusing on reading what's in front of her and what she can control. And right now, Harriet Brown will be analysing that surf, looking for a small window of opportunity. But at the moment, Daniel McKenzie is not giving her much at all. She just went straight on and went to work. Now, Danielle McKenzie, knowledge is power, and she has the knowledge that um, Harriet Brown has that leg injury. So just that last 20, 30 metres of that transition, she started to work that little bit harder. She started to put a bit more work in to try and get that advantage. Now, I've just looked out the window of the broadcast, and it's actually dropped off a little bit in the shore break. So we're not seeing as much action in the shore break right now, and you see those girls just nice and easy, clean through that first break. But if that means that we're not getting much in the shore break, we're going to get something out on that outer bank. Now, in that in that board leg just before, we, we did see the girls pick up a run and, and get through that inshore trough. And look, they're not going straight out. So they see something on the horizon that's striking fear into their bodies and going, let's try that. And we see Danielle McKenzie pull on up now. There is a big set on the horizon out there as she climbs the mountain of water. Harriet Brown, oh, oh she's out. Harriet, that is devastating. She was doing everything right, hanging right there beside Danielle McKenzie. And you read it right up. Proceed with caution. That back brain always plays chaos. And Harriet Brown, we talked about it earlier, she's had so much bad luck and misfortune at these Northcliffe races over the years where every time we get big surf, she's had the broken board as Danielle McKenzie is climbing these monster waves. You've got to remember how big these skis oh, are. Oh, she gets Danny airborne over the top of that one. Danielle McKenzie reaches for the sky. She's trying to pull off her best Matt Hall impersonation. That was impressive. Danielle McKenzie has taken this opportunity, and she has run with it. She's now out into clean green water. You think she's pretty safe at this part of the race. Now... There's a lot still to play. There's a lot to navigate. She's got to get around this top apex. She's then got to turn for home. And we've spoken about it all broadcast. It's about calculated risks. Where do you sit right now, Paulie? You've been in this position before. You've been at the front of races. You've been out in big surf. You love the big stuff. Do you take a bomb? Do you please the crowd? Or do you play it safe knowing that you've got... Let's have a look at that. That's a 50-metre lead. Do you play it safe, try to pick it off, and just get to the beach as safely as you can? Duff, this could be a $10,000 wave for Danielle McKenzie, and she knows that. There is huge prize money up for grabs. And just like you said, she does have a handy lead. And more often than not, Shannon Eckstein's golden rule was always play the percentages, play the smart game. Danielle McKenzie, she's a warrior, though. She takes off on some big ways as we watch her drop the paddle there she must have seen something because she's trying to position herself right now she doesn't want to go into that impact zone and have one land on her she's done that very well as we watch her oh now, she's going to ride it to the side so i thought she was waiting to pick that up but she's playing the percentages right now duff she's playing the percentages but what she is also doing is giving those back markers a chance to go she's giving those back markers a chance to take a wave because one little slip from here and it's race over for danielle mckenzie as we see lizzie wellborn out the back she is going for gold she's your current um, series leader she's second in the series she's your jackpot champ she was your hayden kenny champ and she's picking it up right now there's ten thousand points on the line and she needs every Every single one of these in this overall series as we see her just fall out the back of that. So Danielle McKenzie now picks up the rating. Here we go, Paulie. We're getting to the final stages. This Friday shootout, 10,000 points on the line. There is still a heck of a shorey to navigate here, Duff. I don't want to call her home because we saw what happened Joey Collins just in this short break. It can wreak havoc at the last minute, but Danielle McKenzie is doing all the right things as she puts that paddle down to the shore. She wants to get her ski out in front of that white wasp, right at home. I'm going to call it. She's done enough. She's going to take the win she's going to take the 10,000 hey she set out the fire shot she set out the warning shot she said hey I'm coming I'm coming late watch for me and as she did she's come late and she's taken this one out a wonderful performance there for Danielle McKenzie she's formerly of New Zealand she's an absolute world champion she's a champion human being and she's your Friday shootout 10,000 point champion and you know what that does for her now it sets up tomorrow for the overall series as well as that jackpot opportunity. So Lizzie Wellborn, unfortunately for her, she didn't qualify this morning. She won't play, take further part in this um, Summer Surf Series as Georgia Miller gets some very valuable points. I did not see that one coming. Lizzie Wellborn there in third. So Georgia Miller currently sits third overall in the uh, in the series points. Danielle McKenzie a little bit further down the list in the uh, the Open Ironwoman Series and. Lizzie Wellborn, no, no taking further part. 
We're going to get to Joshy Minow down on the beach. He's got the champ. He's already spoken to her today. I wonder what he comes up with this time. Hugs all around. Thanks, boys. I did speak to you earlier today when you won the ski, and you said I would be coming in the final leg of this Ironman, and you willed it into existence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually was a little bit further up the race than I expected. Um, so really just worked hard, backed the decisions to stick left, and really just grinded all the way home. Um, I did see Lizzie coming down a little way for a sec because I sort of was playing around out there, but yeah, just hold it straight. And, and that's what we do out here every day of training. So, so yeah, it was pretty awesome to win here at BMD Northcliffe and huge thanks to Sean Partners for putting on an epic, epic event. Um, yeah, all the girls are absolutely loving it. I feel like for a long time, you've been a bit of the bridesmaid. You've had Georgia, Harriet, they've been winning constantly and you've always been there. Does this feel like it's a bit of monkey off the back and to get a special one for yourself? Oh, look, it's, it's always special to get these wins. Um, but I absolutely love those girls. We, we push each other each day underneath Naomi Flood and, and we're, we're there to get better each... We're there to get better and better as um, a club. You were Mystic Mac in the ski where you called it. Are you going to call it for tomorrow as well? No, nah, no jinxing out there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The Friday shootout, Shore and Partners, Iron Woman champion, BMD Northcliffs, Danielle McKenzie. Thank you, and good luck to everyone out there. Woo.